Welcome to 999. Are you calling for yourself or someone else? One 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 was invented to reduce the amount of calls made to nine 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 every year. One 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 is for non emergencies only. I answer calls from the uh, general public who call in that need actual advice from either a GP or to be referred to the emergency department. The expected response time is anything between um, two to three um, minutes up until as long as it takes to answer the call and to get to the relevant disposition. We originally take the call, it drops in, um, we answer the call, we introduce ourselves and then we go on to find out who the patient is, where they live, where they are at the moment, what's wrong with them and then we go through a list of questions that are based onto the computer and we, we can finally come to the end disposition which is either the GP, an ambulance or the hospital. My name's Teresa. I'm a clinical advisor. Are you calling for yourself or someone else? So you're calling for your wife. Okay, and can I take your wife's name? Can I take your wife's date of birth? Thank you. Can I take your address? And a return telephone number in case we get cut off. Can I also take your GP surgery name and address? Okay, thank you. Can you tell me the main reason for your call? Okay, I'm sorry to hear that. So your wife has passed away. Did she have a terminal illness? So it was an expected death. Okay. And how long ago did this happen, sir? Okay, so it's just happened. Okay. So she's definitely dead and it was an expected death or terminal illness. Okay, are you certain they're not breathing? Is there anybody there who is qualified to certify or confirm death? No. Okay. I'm going to pass your details through to a GP who will call you back regarding coming out within the next six hours to certify your wife's death. I'm sorry for your loss, sir. 41% of calls made to the 999 are in requirement of an ambulance. So my job role is I'm a paramedic but I'm also a clinical team leader. Um, so a clinical team leader looks after a team of about 12 to 14 staff and here at Ashford we make sure that their welfare is okay, everything's running smoothly in the office, um, the day-to-day -day running of the station, any tasks, sickness, leave, welfare, that kind of thing. We also do bronze uh, function which means we're in charge if you like, we get to drive around in a nice shiny Land Rover. Um, we get to be running incidents, so if we have a large road traffic accident or if there's any major incidents or anything like that, then we will be in charge of running that. And we would li liaise with the bronze from the fire and the police. Um, as a paramedic, treating patients, that's basically the job we do, we treat patients. We're able to do extended skills such as cannulation, intubation, um, advanced life-saving skills. What is the worst thing I've ever witnessed? That's a difficult question. I've been in 22 years and I've seen almost everything. Um, a lot of people think blood and gore and things like that are the worst things to see. And yes, they're horrible, but sometimes for me the worst things to see are when you go to an elderly couple and they've been married for 65, 70 years and one of them has passed away and it's just dealing with the partner that's been left behind. Sometimes they can really affect you and make you think, you know, just make you go home and have a little tear in your eye. But yeah, we do get jobs that affect us, children, um, you know, those kind of things always get to us. But different things get to different people and I think it's all sort of relative. So when we arrive on shift, the first thing we need to get is our drugs. Paramedics carry control drugs such as morphine and diazomols. And the way we access our drugs is through this Omnicell system. And it's a fingerprint recognition system. So we place our finger on here. You're welcome. Lisa and Lucy. And it knows my name. Then we scan the box that we're going to put our drugs into. We select it. And then we have a list here of all the drugs that we can remove. Any controlled drugs like morphine or dasmols, we need to get a witness and they will put their fingerprint on it as well. What happens then, the call is then dispatched to the relevant ambulance or car, depending on what's nearer. They always dispatch to the closest vehicle to where the incident occurs. If it's a Cat A Red, as I've said, we need to be there within eight minutes. But unfortunately, we're not always around the corner from a call. We've 
got most things on the back of the ambulance here we can cope with most eventualities, medical and trauma. This is our defibrillator, which we use to monitor ECGs, people's heart rate. We also use it as a defibrillator when people are in cardiac arrest so that we can shock them back to life. Um, lots of other equipment. All our splints and things are in here. We've got vacuum splints, which is like a big sort of squishy mattress that we put people in and that keeps them nice and stable. We've got a suction unit, we've got a ventilator so that when people are intubated, which is putting a tube down their throat, if they're not breathing, we can keep them on that and that will keep them breathing for us, which means our hands are free to do other things. So then what happens is we accept the job on the MDT in the vehicle, we put Go Mobile and we put on our blue lights and sirens and we head off to the call.